Brian, thank you very much. Well, <laughs> I, I was in the production team meeting uh, for just a couple of minutes, sort of in the wings, and s setting everything up to run exactly on time, like a train station. So now I have four minutes <laughs> to do, <laughs> to stay on time, <laughs> to do what I was asked to do. So I, I love that I'm here. And, you know, I, and, and doing all the thinking, here's what I want. I want to leave you with something that ha doesn't have my name on it at all, but it's going to be in you because it always has been. I just want you to return to something that always was, even before you got here, and then I want you to do, as Chris talked about, hand it forward to the generations in front of you, but more importantly, in the people who are right next to you. And then I'm going to uh, talk about that. But it hit me, you know what I'm, I'm here doing? I'm, call, I'm here to call us all, all to repentance. And let me tell you what I mean by repentance. I'm not talking about uh, just leaving the counterfeit solutions, our getaways, our cures, our, our runaways, our addictions, our control uh, compulsions. I'm talking about what repentance really means. And I know in the Greek, it turn away, change your mind, change of mind. But what it really means, too, beyond those words, once you've changed your mind, where are you going to go? Once you've turned away, where are you headed? Well, the thing is, the word repentance in its full form, it means to come home. Come home, Yeshua, come home. Come, come home to Yasha. Come home to where your healing is, your salvation is. Come home, the light's on. The table's set, the door's unlocked. Come home, come on home. Just like that old movie, E.T., that sold... Uh, <laughs> millions and millions and millions and millions of tickets to adults because he wanted to phone home. And the way he said it, if you just shut your eyes a minute and you hear it, it's like, E.T. phone home, E.T. phone home. I just want to go home. And that's where the welcome at really is. Not in what we do, but what we return to. So I want you to know what I'm going to be talking about just for a few minutes, really, truly a few minutes, is just hitting the high spots of your opportunity to come home. This is the parable of the seeds. Remember, it was the soil that was yielded that received the seeds. It means that what I'm here to talk to you about is not what God is doing for us, but what we can bring to God. And I want you to hear that. It's not what God is doing for us because he is. But how much are we receiving of what he's doing? It's, this is about what we bring to him, which means yield it up. I want you to know that the word yield is a double meaning. The word yield means to give way or give up or surrender, which means to turn back over. And soil that's turned up is receptive to seeds. But the word yield means turn up, turn up or give way. And it also means harvest. So by yielding, you produce a yield. I mean, there's the parable of the soils in Matthew 13. By yielding, you will 30, 60, 100 times more than was planted, which means you're going to have impact in ways that you didn't even know, nor will you ever see in just your very presence. Now, I want you to know that we're in church, and church is the place where you're, you're, you're called and able and free to put it down, to put it down, which means that you're not in the locker room on the construction site. You're not at a place of danger. You're not in prison. You're free. You're free to put it down, which means you're free to bring it up, whatever you're putting in front of you that hides where you are, who you are, how you're made, so you can express how you're made to others around you, because it turns out we're made a certain way, which I'm going to talk about now. I want to, I, now, for, for the, I said, I want to leave you with something that doesn't have my name on it. Now I want to leave you with something that has my name all over it. All right? And chuckle, chuckle, like, okay, here's the cell. All right. Now, I want you to know that I am here. I am performing. I'm performing. If you follow, you know, it's like I'm not a dancer. I'm a speaker. But I want you to know that as I perform, my full presence is with you in my performance. I am not faking this. I'm not planning the next move I'm about to make. I don't know what I'm about to do next. So I just want you to know that. But what I want to do is talk to you about what you can have, and then I've got a volunteer, someone here is going to volunteer. You know how volunteers work, I point out, you, you know, you volunteer. 
somebody's going to volunteer and come up and we're going to show you how to do it okay now how many are already want to get up here <laughs> you know front row gets picked a lot right now we okay i've got who it is okay now when i looked at you and say i've got who it is are you hoping i'm a little cross-eyed i'm really looking over here but it's like <laughs> you know so now i want to ask you what do you feel when you hear me say i'm going to get a volunteer up here so we can see how to do it what do you feel oh because i was looking at you and i was looking at you what is your name yeah you're, she's covered her face she's hiding her heart and she she just went under her chair now, <laughs> now, what do you what did you feel the wanting to hide which is a thought not a feeling so what did you feel fear what's your name liz it's a great name it's like charlotte's web great name but to, and it really is a great, and this is a great name. I mean, names are such great things. I hope you love yours, and I hope you know it's a beautiful name, do you know? And so, uh, it's so, unless you're in trouble, and then it's a scary name. But, but you experienced fear of the possibility of being up here and being in a position like I'm in right now, out of control, <laughs> right? So what is it we're scared of? We're scared of each other. We're scared of what's going to happen if I'm in a position of a repeating of my past. See, I want you to know that not a single person in here is afraid of the unknown. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. We're afraid of a recurrence of what has happened before in our own lives, which made us armor up and lose ourselves and leave ourselves behind. So when it's time to put it down, we don't know how to. And we don't know what's behind it when we do. Because we're trained by the world to live away from how we were created. Now, I'll get all kinds of disagreements, and that's fine, but I'm telling you there's no such thing as fear of the unknown. And if we had time, I'd be like Paul, give you three hours of, you know, and you fall asleep, fall out of your chair, and then I raise you from the dead or whatever. How to, you know. <laughs> so, but <laughs> I won't go that long, because if you die, I'm going like, I don't know. We need paramedics. <laughs> now, what I want you to do, this is, this is the thing. I want you to subscribe to ChipDodd.com. That's my name. Chip, C-H-I-P, one P. <laughs> D-O-D-D, -D -D, rhymes with odd if you take a D out, okay, chip odd, chip dod. Then I want you to, this, these are two books that are just like whatever. I've, the, I've got other books a lot better than these two, but you can't get into those books unless you go through these books. So it's kind of a, a setup in some ways. <laughs> but uh, this is a book about how we're made. This is a book also about how we're made. This is a language of, that God birthed us with. And this is what we're made to express with the language we were birthed with, okay? The voice of the heart and needs of the heart. But I want you to subscribe to my website so you can, this is, we have a new cover, so you can download. It's a free download, free, F-R-E-E, -E, free. It doesn't mean it's worthless. It means I spent a lot of money and I'm not getting anything from it. That's what that means. So, and you know what's the funniest thing? I actually have some people that help me. And I say, do you understand that I work like crazy a lot? to earn money, and then I go over here and I spend all the money on all these things that don't make any money. It's like, what a great business plan. <laughs> Do you know, it's kind of like the church. <laughs> Do you know, and that's a good thing. And I'm like, so what? I'm gonna keep working and put the money over here. And I do not, for I do for profit. I'm a for profit industry, all right? And I take my money and spend it on things that don't make money. Now. <laughs> because I'm so smart. Now, this is a free download. What you don't understand in this book and the circles of it, it's linear. And, and my wife understands it, okay? She, she said, you don't make any sense. I'm like, well, and she said, do something that makes sense. So I did fill in the blanks. Like you read the book and you fill in the blank and ask application questions and, and then some personal questions. And then we're doing, this is gonna be coming out soon on the website called Needs of the Heart. And I'm telling you, you take these little tools and you go into small group with these little tools and I can promise you that you're going to yield. Double meaning, promise. Because you're going back to how you're made and you're bringing how you're made to the God that promises all who call out upon me and call out upon me in truth and bring how they're made to me, live the Psalms right out in front of me, I promise you I will meet your needs. Okay, I will abundantly and overarchingly meet your needs. 
the, the, the uh, psalm that David quoted, those who delight in the Lord, which means need, offer, smile, cry, I will give them the desires of their heart. Not only will I reveal what I've written on their hearts before birth, I will move them towards the very thing that they're seeking. It's a promise. Like, if he breaks it, he, he's, he's the, the one that's not telling the truth. If he breaks it, he's the one that's lying. If he breaks it, then we've got a problem. And we need to take that problem to the one that broke his promise, which means we're called to bring everything we are, whether it's the deepest grief, the greatest celebration, the most vile complaint, or the greatest praise. It's called the Psalms. We're called to bring the Psalms of our heart to the one who made us so we can be in relationship with him. Okay, now I don't have a clicker, so uh, who has one? <laughs> Jenny? Is it Jenny? J what? Yeah. Jenna, Jenna, okay, close. Pretty name, good name. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like Liz, that's a good name too. Okay, so first slide. All right, great. All right, now, we're going to move faster now, all right? Jeremy's like, Chip, that was a five-minute setup you really didn't have to do. It's like, okay. Now, oh, excellent, because these other guys. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> it was a little loud there. Why did I, say? I actually was laughing. Um, it wasn't a performance laugh. That was that obnoxious donkey laugh I do at home. Okay. <laughs> all right. Now, it turns out that whether you like it or not, every human being is created like this. You didn't make you, you were made. You don't decide how you're made. This isn't humanism, this is Christianity, we're created. But what's beautiful about us is it's a fact over which we're powerless. You were born powerless over this fact. This is a fact. This came, this came with you when you got here, all right? As you were born, I said to the leadership, so shall you remain. You're not going to get away from how you're made. Number two, I want you to know that, that Christianity, as a little, park, little thing to the side, Christianity is the only religion upon the face of the earth that addresses this, actually how we're created, and is for the fulfillment of the individual. No other religion on the face of the earth is for the fulfillment of the individual except Christianity. The only other religion that comes close is humanism. Humanism is for the fulfillment of the individual. The starting point is diametrically different. The starting point for Christianity is God made you. The starting point for, starting point for humanism is I make myself. So I want you to know here's some truth. This is truth. It's not your truth, my truth. It's the truth. There's the truth about how we're made. All right. And I'm talking about us bringing how we're made to who made us. So I want you to know that. Now, what I'm going to do is this is the beginning of our first confession. If we're going to do repentance, we've got to come home to how we're made. Now, confession, I want you to know, I know how almost all of us were raised. Confession means, tell me what you've done wrong now. You go in a booth, that's what I did wrong today. Like, I'll see you in 10 minutes kind of thing. I'll be back. Like, Why don't you just live here? You have any sandwiches kind of thing, you know? So confession does not mean what you've done bad. Confession means that you agree that you're human. It's fess up to being like this. Fess up and tell the truth about how you're made and use the language of how you're made to present, present yourself to me, to be present with me. And that's where we get the word gift. Presence. Presence. I'm Southern, so you thought I said presence, but I said presence. <laughs> P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E. Same thing to God. That when we bring ourselves to him, he calls that a present. He, we're bringing the image bearing of who he made us to be back to the one who made us. And he already said, it's very good. And remember, the first not good that God ever said was, it's not good for us to be alone. And if church isn't a place to put down being alone out there and not being alone in here so we can refuel and go back out there and share not being alone out there, it's called evangelism. Like, hey, you're made like this. You don't have to run from it anymore. Come home. Come on home. Come on home. Because this is so powerful that you're going to do it one way or another. You're going to be seen one way or another. You can be even seen 
by hiding from people. Say, I want you to know that you're going to seek to belong and matter no matter what. You're going to seek safety and care no matter what. You're going to actually seek life and life to the full no matter what. I'm telling you point blank. In the addictions world, every single person I treated was seeking life and life to the full. Drugs, alcohol, achievement, approval, care, caretaking other people, people pleasing, uh, sex addiction, lust addiction, uh, power addiction, control addiction. In other words, a multiple layers and multiple ways of attempting to find full life without having to be vulnerable to how God made you. That's what addiction actually is. It's an attempt to find fulfillment without having to be a human being, without having to have feelings. Because addiction is absolutely running from or an intolerance of vulnerability. And the church is just as full of addiction as the world. Now that's not a bad thing. That's just a fact, true thing. And it doesn't have to stay that way. But the church also, we ourselves, need to repent. Because we have not taught as much about the anthropology of how we're made and what we bring to God as much as we talk about the theology of what we need to believe. So I want us to do, when I do the volunteer, I want us to move from, like, this is what I believe to witnessing this is what I'm made to experience. Now, I want to show you a, a video. But basically, this slide, all it means is I'm created to be seen, I'm created to be heard, and I'm created to, to, to be benefited from relationship because the more I have, what? The more I have, what? The richer I am? Yeah. The more I have, what? The more I bounty I have? Yeah. The more I have, the more I can give. So we're called to take as much as we possibly can because the more I've got, the more I can give. So I keep making all this money. <laughs> so I go over here and hopefully not put it in a hole, you know, actually spend it on you. Because in that uh, manual, there are like $5,000 of videos that I, I did, little clip videos that explain the feelings because I know what can happen when a person returns to how they're made. It's amazing. So now this next clip, this video, is, a, is, a, is a showing the power of how we're made. And I've got to hit, I've got to hit points high, but I want you to know, just a short shorthand, you come out of the womb looking for who's looking for you. I want you to know that human being fulfillment in life is, is only through being in relationship with yourself, others, and God. Hear, O Israel, love the God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's three relationships. And if you don't have a self, if you don't know yourself, if you don't deal with yourself, if you don't face yourself, if you don't feel yourself, if you don't have your own needs, you don't have any relationship with yourself to offer people who need relationship with you. Do you get that? But we in the church have so often practiced Buddhism, which is death to self. And, I don't, and I'm, I'm not talking about th that you don't need to put down your ego, put down the easing God out so the God, the self God made can rise. See, in the acorn are the roots of the oak tree, right? Now, that's not Buddhist. That's me. Okay, that's, that's scripture. That's, that's uh, 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 Isaiah 61 when Jesus dropped the mic at the synagogue when he opened up the scroll at, at Psalm, uh, Isaiah 61 and he said, look, I came for this. Good news for the poor. Binding up the brokenhearted, freedom for the captives, light from the darkness, a, 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 a balm of gladness for those who are in mourning, and there will be oaks of righteousness because they will come out of what kept them from living, the ego, being stuck in the acorn that goes into the soil, and the roots do this, and the tree does that. You see? So we've been practicing Buddhism, which is get rid of yourself and blend into nothingness, and you've reached nirvana. Like, if that's my Christianity, I'm out. I'm not doing it. No. No. Oh, we practice Stoicism. I'm not affected by life. I'm here to affect yours. I don't have a life, but I'd love to give you one. I mean, you know, I don't know what it's like to be alive, but I'd sure love for you to have life and life to the full with Jesus Christ. It's like, no, I don't want what you've got. You're not bringing me anything because you're not even like me. You don't know anything about E.T. goes home. You don't know what it's like to want to go home. I'm not looking for heaven. I'm looking for a life here right now. If we got heaven, I'm great with heaven. That's good, but I live in hell now because I'm so isolated. 
from how I'm made. And that's how come addiction works, because it's the next best thing to being fully alive if no one showed you how to be fully alive. And if Christianity is about dying, I'm not in. Because Jesus said, point blank, I came to give you life and it to the full. And the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, how come he said it like that? He said it weird. Steal, kill, and then destroy. Why not steal, destroy, and kill? Well, you know, well, it's because, like Chris was talking about, you steal, and then I kill your heart, and then the next generation is automatically destroyed. I kill one, I don't have to do anything about the next ones. Look at our society right now. Now, this video that's about to come up, this is a longitudinal research that's been going on for years and years and years and years. And all it's going to do is show the power of how we're made for home and what happens when home leaves us and what happens when home comes back. And I want you to know it's the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there's nothing wrong with bad because bad can be repaired. Ugly is when we get stuck and remain eternally suspended away from how we're made. You ready, Jenna? Pretty name. Babies this young are extremely responsive to the emotions and the reactivity and the social interaction that they get from the world around them. This is something that we started studying oh, 30, 40 years ago when people didn't think that infants could engage in social interaction. In the still face experiment, what the mother did was she sits down and she's playing with her baby who's about a year of age. I knew my girl. Oh. And she gives a greeting to the baby. The baby gives a greeting back to her. Yeah. This baby starts pointing at different places in the world and the mother's trying to engage her and play with her. They're working to coordinate their emotions and their intentions, what they want to do in the world. And that's really what the baby is used to. And then we ask the mother to not respond to the baby. The baby very quickly picks up on this. And then she uses all of her abilities to try and get the mother back. She smiles at the mother. She points because she's used to the mother looking where she points. Yeah. The baby puts both hands up in front of her and says, what's happening here? She makes that screechy sound at the mother, like, come on, why aren't we doing this? Even in this two minutes when they don't get the normal reaction, they react with negative emotions, they turn away, they feel the stress of it, they actually may lose control of their posture because of the stress that they're experiencing. Okay. okay. I'm here. And what are you doing? Oh, yes. Oh, what a big girl. It's a little like the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good is that normal stuff that goes on, that we all do with our kids. The bad is when something bad happens, but the infant can overcome it. After all, when you stop the still face, the mother and the baby start to play again. The ugly is when you don't give the child any chance to get back to the good. There's no reparation, and they're stuck in that really ugly situation. Great. How many of you wanted her to stop it? Yeah. That makes you human. You just declared yourself as human. And that thing that was resonating in you that said, stop it, stop it, stop it, that's who you used to be, maybe who you still are, and that has a voice and it has an alphabet that makes words that can be spoken. See, I want you to know that we as a human beings experienced how we're made by watching that Wait, that child's, you're made to see that child. You're made to hear that child. You're made to that child to be benefited from you. Now bring your heart back to your face and show me. And this is just neglect. See, that was neglect, which is the worst form of abuse a human being can experience is to be isolated from how they're made. And sooner or later, if that parent continues to do that thing, that child's going to leave home. 
leave behind how they're made. They lose contact with it, but they still have a need to belong and matter for safety and security and to life and life to the full. And I promise you that so many of the bourbons and whiskeys have people's names because it's relationship. Jack Daniels, George Jickle, right? Those are names of people because I sit down with a person and have a conversation. Jack, what, what, do you, what, what do you got? I'm ready to hear anything you got to say, Chip. I mean, it's a relationship. I'm telling you, uh, 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 once, you once you've been in that high chair, and the faces don't come back. When you try to have a church family, you're going to have the ways I perform to fake it to get my needs met instead of me bringing myself to the God who's going to meet me in it. So I just want you to hear that. Now, this is the language that that child was speaking. Oh, by the way, I was standing here. I've got a clicker now. And uh, I felt hands on my shoulder that were, that were kind. I thought, God. I'm, having, I, I, it's, I'm standing here in the dark, and I'm being touched by God, and it was Jeremy. You know? <laughs> like, ah, well, thanks anyway, Jeremy, which is a great name. Jeremy's a good name. <laughs> okay, now, I, I, I'll be very brief here because uh, you got this. So get in this because, like, you know, don't get a T-shirt. Get a life's experience. So, I mean, uh, here's your T-shirt, but here's your, you know, enter, enter into it. So, th we've been given eight feelings that allow us to live fully in a tragic place, and those are them. And I'll just, I'll just let you know right now, there aren't any others. Those are them. Those are all the feelings a human being has, okay? Now, there are multiple thousands and even millions of descriptors that come out of that, but, but if you don't know the language of connection as you're created then other human beings when you speak the language you were given by God cannot really relate to you it has to all be explained but guys sadness is understood everywhere every culture up and down throughout history sadness has never changed King Xerxes or Darius said to Nehemiah your face can only mean one thing Nehemiah you must be sad now this was a king who was above human, speaking to a wine bearer who had no special position really at all, except to die for the king by drinking poison. You know, he was nothing but a rat to the king. But he said, I see in your face something I relate to because I know it myself. I think that's an amazing thing. It was like the child and the parent in the high chair and connecting. He said, you must be sad. He said, oh, king, I fear telling you, but I'm so sad. I'm so broken heart. Now, whether you're from Korea or Kansas, Sadness is the same across the world. If you see a 12-year-old girl in Korea at, on the tarmac running towards this woman who looks at her and her face is like this and the, they hug and her, the child's face is buried in the mother's breast and the mother's face is on the head of the child and they're both shaking, shaking, shaking. You go, there's a story of sadness there, a loss that is no longer a loss. A, a return that's been prayed over for years and years is finally there. You make up a story, but it started with sadness. Now, if you don't know these feelings, you're going to always use a menu that won't work, meaning you're going to go to Taco Bell and order a Big Mac. And then when they don't give you a Big Mac, it's like, hey, I'm going to tell you guys. Y'all need, in other words, this is the language of connection. There is not another language of connection that is as rudimentary as this. Hurt, and I'll just be, be brief with this, but hurt is a feeling that tells you that you've got bleeding inside. Most of our bleeding in life is internal. We, have in, we bleed to death internally by not exposing the wounds outside so you can touch and help me because I can't heal this by myself. Remember, it's not, we're not made to do it alone. So hurt is a feeling that can bring us to healing if we admit, surrender, and accept. If we admit, confession, Surrender, render over, yield, and accept the results. Sometimes they happen slowly and sometimes fast. But, but we have to become capable of doing a thing called waiting. Now, waiting is a, called, called, called hoping in spite of the results, but I keep hoping. See, hope is something that you were born with, you're never going to get rid of. It's the eternal flame within you. And I mentioned yesterday, I've been in, listen, I've been in the field of death for 30 years. Life, for sure, but I wear death. I know death. And I've never known a person who committed suicide who did it because they were hopeless. No way. 
People do it because they're helpless. And then the pain of hope won't stop. See, they, they, they can't stop wishing that this were different. The pain won't stop. Hope is painful and hope is dangerous and hope is scary. And you can't get rid of it. because It comes with you. It's in the package called you. It's part of your image bearing of God. You don't make hope. You have to face hope. It's not going anywhere. So you can run as far as you want from it. But guess what? Wherever you go, there you are. Your heart goes wherever you go. You take your body anywhere in the world, but your heart's sitting right there going, I'm not liking this. I'd like something real different than this. I'm made to be gratified, not satiated. Don't be sticking that in here. That's what, anyway. So hurt is a feeling that brings us to healing. Healing brings us to courage because we have a story and a witness of how this is where I was, this is what happened, this is where I am now. Loneliness is a feeling that speaks to everything that makes us as, we're, as right. This is, this is what makes us right. Loneliness is a cue that says I'm made for relationship. And therefore, they're, they're, I write about in the book, there are many kinds of relationship. Relationship with others, relationship with yourself, solitude, relationship with God, relationship with creation. So there, and there are multiple levels of relationship. Sadness is a feeling that says you care about living. Sadness is a feeling that says you're capable of admitting that you're made for relationship, you're made for attachment. And we, because we live in a tragic place, we, we, we're, we're going to lose. And if you can't lose, you can't attach because you can't care enough to know that it's going to cost you something to love. See, anytime somebody loves somebody, when you love someone, like you, some of you have got children in here, well, you love your children most of the time. And <laughs> except when you have feelings you don't know what to do with because you don't know how to take care of yourself and say, I don't have anything left in my tank. So you start hating your children <laughs> instead of like, I got nothing left in my tank. I need some rest so I can love my children you can't give what you don't have but as soon as you sign the contract of love I love my children you have signed a contract of pain so if you can't do pain you can't do love and are we not what Paul says of all these things faith hope and love of all these things what's the greatest love so if you can't do this you don't love not really you, you show out, you perform, but your, your presence isn't really in it. So sadness brings us to a thing called acceptance. Even though life works like it does, I will continue to live, attach, and care. But everybody in here has been somewhere where you lost something, someplace, sometime, and somewhere, and someone. Right? I'm, I, I, you know the song Unchained Melody, Righteous Brothers, Elvis Presley, you know, all these different people that. It's like, I, 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 I'm thinking I'm going to probably die. I'm about 85 or so, and, um, which means I don't have as much time left as I once thought I did. But, um, and as Sonia, I, I kind of picture that she goes before me. I hope she does <laughs> because I don't want her to be around without me because she, said, she says this stuff like, I'll never get enough of you except during COVID. <laughs> and, we were, we were home together for a week and a half, and we, she was standing by the pantry, opened the doors. She said, you know how I've always said I'll never get enough of you? I was like, oh, here it comes. She goes, I have. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's like, it was so funny. And, and it really was hilarious because we're, like, bonded, so she can say stuff like that. It's hilarious. Sometimes she tells me she's going to hit me in the throat or kick me in the throat, and, you know. <laughs> and then when she one time swung at me, I'm like, God, it's like, I thought you were kidding. No, she didn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so sadness brings us back to acceptance. Anger is a very difficult feeling. You've got to read the book because anger is a desire for life. Anger is a hunger for change. Anger is wishing for something different. And see, when a person commits suicide, they're stifling their anger. It's fury against desire for life. So you put a bullet in it. See, see suicide is an act of revenge against God and self, against my own pain my own wish to love and be loved. I can't get away from how I'm created to belong and matter, to be safe and cared about and have life and life to the full. Man, and did you know that according to the statistics, people that call suicide hotlines, if you call and make connection, it's a 90-something percent chance that you will not do anything to harm yourself. Just a phone call that somebody answers. Are you kidding me? You can say anything you want on that phone call. They connected. See, I mean, we're that, made, we're that made for connection. Okay. So anger is a desire for life. And the gift of anger, if you're willing to struggle with hoping, wishing, desiring, longing, uh, hungering, and thirsting, 
you know, hunger for, desire for, thirst for, wishing for, hoping for, those are all angry words. And that brings you to passion. And passion is a willingness to be in pain for something that matters more than pain. Now we're talking about parenting. Or we're talking about church. Or we're talking about leadership. If, if, I used to tell the guys in treatment, if I ever walk in the doors here and I don't come in this room angry, if I don't come in this place angry, you need to ask me to go home. Because I don't care. See, anger and caring are synonyms. Okay, then fear is a feeling that is not about an absence of faith. Fear is a feeling that tells you you're in danger and it's telling you to ask for help because you have faith that help will come. So, so you've got to be really good at naming your fear just like Liz. Liz, she tried to cover up, disappear, become invisible, go away so she wouldn't be in front of you because of the unknown, which isn't, is going to, about to recur in her life. Something bad could happen if I go up there. But it's not going to be you. I've got a, a real volunteer that I, I say, I know, it's no one here. So just let, be, get back to listening to me and don't start planning what you're going to say to me, even though we haven't done anything. Because I don't know what I'm going to say either. Okay, so when the volunteer comes. And then, so fear actually brings you to faith. I would love to, you to get into that because it's an amazing thing. Guys, I'm telling you, fear is not sin. It's hiding from our fear is sin. Not bringing our fear to who, who deals with us in our fear. And says, fear not means because I know you're afraid. I want you to know I'm right here with you and we're going through this together. Emmanuel. Shame, healthy shame, healthy shame. All shame, there's no, no healthy shame. Healthy shame is the dependency feeling. Guys, you're born dependent and you're made to stay dependent. I mentioned yesterday, Matthew 7, 7, Jesus said, ask so you can receive Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open unto you. In other words, I'm not enough by myself. So therefore I need, I reach, I receive, I knock, I ask. Guys, leaders who don't ask for help are dangerous leaders. Yeah, because they're empty people who need you to fill them. Which means they're not, they're not leading you, they're using you. They're drinking from you because they're empty. So you need leaders who are really good at asking for help who admit mistakes, who have the answers that they do have, but also admit when they don't have the answers, the stuff like that. Because healthy shame is I make mistakes and so do you. I'm not God, you aren't either. I have some answers, but I don't have many, so I've got a lot of questions. And then lastly, healthy shame is I need you and you need me. And do we not lose contact with I need you pretty quickly and we turn everything into you need me. And the only way I can be valuable is if you need me which makes me a commodity, not a person. So healthy shame is what we become ashamed of. Toxic shame is contempt towards myself for being dependent, for being somebody who has the truth within them, for being somebody who knows I'm made out of dirt. We're toxically ashamed of confession. I'm human. Okay? And then guilt is a feeling we have whenever we do something that goes against how God made me. Okay? Guilt is about action or plans to commit actions, and that's called sin. Sin. Feelings aren't sin. What we do with our feelings can be sin or not sin. If we're not truthful with our sins and hide sins and not truthful with our feelings and we hide from our feelings, we're going to compound sin. If you get truthful with your feelings, you are officially not in sin. You're officially being fully human, but it's dangerous. And then gladness. Believe it or not, is, is, believe it or not, gladness is the thing that everybody says they want, but unless you're good at the other seven, you won't be glad because gladness is a sense of confidence and competence at being able to be human in a life that's broken because you have others in relationship with you and a God who knows you so that you can walk with confidence in the midst of a tragic place. Okay, so gladness is derivative. Gladness is an outcome. Happiness is junk. Happy, don't seek happiness. Get rid of happiness. Don't bite off into humanism, Buddhism, Stoicism, or any of the other ones. Because they, they, they promise you happiness. Happiness is crap. See, because happiness is about happenstance. It's your external environment controlling your internal world. You're trying to fix your environment so you don't have to feel. That's what happiness is. I want you to have gladness. Gladness is an internal experience that you carry around with you wherever you go. Because you're confident and competent in the relationships you have and the God who knows you. See, it's an outcome. All right. So there are your feelings. Now, what happens is once we lose contact with our feelings, we end up becoming victims. I want you to know a victim is a person who believes their feelings are useless. 
You know, Martin Luther King said that violence ultimately is the, is the, is the, is the voice of the unheard, the unseen, the non-benefited. And he was talking way beyond ethnic groups and colors of melanin. He was talking about humans, all of us, right? Yeah. And so a victim is somebody who doesn't believe that feelings have any point. Now, the moment you say, I feel, and you name one of those eight feelings, you're officially not a victim. You've declared yourself as God made. I feel fear. I feel sad. I feel lonely. I feel hurt. I feel angry. I feel glad. I feel guilt. I feel shame. See, that's like confession. It's an invitation. I'm made out of Velcro. Will you connect with me? Versus I'm made out of Teflon. Nothing sticks to me. So I want you to know that once you let yourself be vulnerable, in other words, you say, I'm not a victim anymore. I feel. It's going to take you to, I feel, therefore I need. And then you're going to be in a position of being responsible. Now, I'm real close to getting the volunteer. Okay, Jeremy, how much time do I have? Ten? Okay, all right. So that means, that means the volunteer needs to head up this way. Okay. Uh, responsibility, the word responsibility comes from the word response able, which means able to take ownership of being human. All right? Now, a sick group, an impaired family system, if you grew up in a world where you grew up believing you were responsible for other people's feelings, which means you made people feel or you made people not feel, that's sick. If you come from a world where you had to control others' thoughts, you had to predict what they were thinking, you had to control others' moods, that's sick. It's grandiose. It makes you a little god who can, has a magic wand over people. And that's where most leadership, tragically, most humans live, being responsible for others. Also, I make you hit me. I'm responsible for your actions. I made you disappointed. I made you go to your room and get in bed. I made you curl up in bed. I made you drink. I made you depressed. I made you anxious. I, made you get, uh, I, made, I stood on your last nerve, mama. So now I've made you not like me anymore. That's grandiosity that children are trained in that's called love. This is the not love that almost all of us call love. I'm responsible for you. But if you're not a child and you're not an old person, I'm not responsible for you. You're responsible for you. But I am responsible towards you. Okay? And now I've got a volunteer. And, okay, let's go back. All right? I've got a volunteer. His name's Jeremy. Great name. Yeah. Now, and when, do you have a mic? Yeah. And because I know I asked Jeremy to do this because one, it's like he's a good dude. And uh, but also I know he knows where all the equipment is. So it's functional. So we're going to sit down here for just a minute and I'm not going to do anything to humiliate you. I promise. That's fine if you do. No, it's not. <laughs> so we now we already know that Jeremy has a, a, a impaired uh, a, a family system attitude. <laughs> You can treat me badly and I'll be okay with it because I don't care about you anyway. <laughs> I mean, that, honestly, that's what he told me. You're leaving, Chip, and I couldn't give a crap. Okay? Yeah. So you say whatever that you is, do. That is not true. Okay, well, I need just you to care. More of a thought it would be just funny. Be also, you, I think you kind of trust me. I do. I do trust you. I know, Absolutely. I, you, we just met each other. Isn't that crazy? Okay. Let me tell you something. Let's see. I'm going to sit where I can kind of look at you better. Uh, let's you scoot up a little bit so I can look at you back. <laughs> you, we're kind of more that way. Like turn it this way? No, yes, just kind of scoot towards the group. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's perfect. See, I'm kind of blind on this side. Actually, I'm literally blind on this side. I can see the curtains, but I can't see because of surgeries, eye surgeries. Okay, so um, what are you up here for? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you to come up here. Now, what's the distance like? It's really like conservation, or conservation. Uh, wow, my brain is blanking. Conser con <laughs> I, you can tell I'm not used to being in front of, on stage. Yeah, I know. Uh, but that's, that's ta it's a good talking distance. What? It's, it's a good talking good distance. Good talking yeah. distance. Like if you and I were sitting, like mm -hmm. I would have a table here and we could have a drink or something. Yeah, if your mouth gets dry, you can have I'm okay, <laughs> thank you then. You do like the athletes just and then I promise you, I can't find my mouth if I did that. It would be so all over me. I'll pour it in yours if you need it. I'm good for now. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good for now and later. <laughs> okay, now, okay, so I want you to hear, did you notice he, he, he couldn't find the word? How many of you wanted to help him find a word? How many started playing Jeopardy? Look at how many hands went up. Because you wanted to be responsible for Jeremy. You wanted to grab that woman and make her face start moving on the video. Because you can't tolerate your own feelings. Okay? Just something to think about. I'm not, I'm not the enemy. I'm your friend. Where's the key to my car? <laughs> Jeremy goes, you know the back way, right? There's a door. Okay. All right. right there. Like, well, that happened fast. It turned on me. Okay, now, I want to tell you a couple of things. I want you to respond to me. Now, what did you feel? I'll go back to the feeling thing. Okay. What did you feel when you couldn't talk? You couldn't find the word. Uh, well, initially a little frustrated because I... No, I, no, 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 no. That's not a feeling. It's oh, no, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I know. See, like, controlling Chip? <laughs> little. Uh, I think I felt a little, a little shame. Yeah. Because I couldn't find the word. Toxic shame. Yeah. Uh, and then um, I got probably a, maybe a little anger, a frustrate uh, anger, because I, I was like, you should know con conversation. I'm still struggling. Yeah. Conversation. Uh, and oh, so conversation. That's yeah, that's, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. It's, like, it's a good yeah. distance for conversation, but yeah. I kept saying conversion because that's where my yeah. brain is. Um, but so those were kind of where I was. It was shame that I couldn't find the word, and then a little frustration, I guess, which would be anger at, uh, at my, myself. At yourself. Yeah. Now, so he went in the toxic shame because he was human. And then, believe it or not, a series of assumptions started, and then he shoot it on himself right here in the chair. And, and it's not okay to shit on yourself, and it's worse to shit on other people. I'm here to tell you that, so I want you to hear what he did. Because, because feelings are bad, and exposure of them puts him in a place of vulnerability, and vulnerability is where our woundedness is, he beat himself a little bit. He got angry at himself for being human. And how many of you just like, hey, it's okay, Jeremy? Because... I do that all the time. That's called relating. Because I'm like, man, it's really okay. I'm the good Samaritan, you know? I mean, like, like I've, had, I've had prostate cancer, and I, I was in the gym, and honestly, the things didn't turn out as well as we would want them to. And so, like, I have to take precautions related to, like, you know, pads and stuff like that a little bit. And, I ended up leaving my underwear on the floor, I forgot it, and, and then left, and there's a little pad in it. Oh, listen, I know this is personal, I got it, but, <laughs> and this guy I went to high school with comes into the gym, says, hey man, here's your underwear. I'm like, oh no, this man knows I got a pad in my underwear, so he's going to tell his wife and stuff, this is going to be a bad day. And he was the cool guy in high school, so it's like, now, who's the cool guy now? Not me again, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> The toxic shame is just a gripper, isn't it? So I'm telling you, I'm great with you not finding the word. Glad I could be of service. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. So I want you to know toxic shame is what makes you despise yourself and have contempt towards yourself for being human. And you learned it somewhere, and that means somebody should on you a lot. Shoulds and shouldn'ts are really dangerous uh, poisons that we get injected with that end up robbing us of healthy shame. So, now what we're doing here, we're being responsible towards each other. Now, this is what I'm, I'm going to say to you. I'm being responsible towards you, but not for you. And did you notice I just let him struggle? I wasn't trying to go conversation, conversion, uh, comfort, convection. Um, I'm out of seas already. Con confrontation, con con uh, conflict. Uh, I mean, just like, it's okay. I wear a pad. And we're not, this is, we're not videotaping this, right? We're, we're streaming to the internet, actually. No! <laughs> no! Delete, delete. Okay, I saw you look at your watch. Let's move. Okay. So I'm interpreting. I was checking to see what time the stream ended, so I didn't know. Oh, no, so you don't. No. Okay, 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 okay. Can you delete stuff on video? I mean, it's the internet never gets deleted. <laughs> oh, God. 
God. Okay. This is supposed to go to another church to be shown, too. So okay. All right. Now. What? Well, you want to come up here? What What'd you say? What? They're showing, they're showing it tomorrow morning. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, I was like, I thought, if you want to come on, come on. You know, kind of, so, oh, that's not good, is it? Okay. Anyway. I mean, you know what? Y'all skip to that probably. We just got 15 minutes. Let's show that section. Okay. So, I want you to know, I got here yesterday as a foreigner. I came onto your land as a foreigner. And um, the leadership group, they had gone to lunch because I, I came in. I, didn't, I just didn't know all the connections and so on. And so I loved the campus. I sent Sonia two photographs of the campus. It's like, this is Sonia's place is cool. And um, then I came in, and there's a guy, I think it's Michelle or Michael. Michael, Michael Munoz. Yeah, yeah. Where, Michael, you in here? Where? He's in the back and right. He's in the band. Oh, yeah. It was like, man, it was like, hey, thank you. You know, he showed me around, and he, he brought me to you. And the moment you and I started talking, uh, I, I, was, I was safe. I really was. And it's like, this guy knows what he's doing. He's helpful. Your face was kind. You know, it's like it's a world of laughter and a world of tears. It's a world of hope and a world of fears. Yeah. You know, It's a small, small world. It's a small, small world. <laughs> right. So it really is time that we're aware how much that we share it's a small world after all. And it's amazing. It says a smile can be related to everywhere in the world because it communicates, hey, you're safe now. It's okay. You're home. You're not going to be mocked, humiliated. It's in the locker room or a construction site where it's like the bad dudes win the day. It's just human beings win the day in here. So I just want to thank you for that. And then you took me up there. And then you and I had an amazing conversation. And I started thinking, this guy is someone who wear, wears the world like a loose tunic instead of a scuba suit. And I, I just thought, you're, you're a good person with a good heart. And I wanted to thank you in front of everybody for what you did for me yesterday. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that, because it's hard for me. You talk about some of that. I mean, it's, it's hard for me to take a compliment um, because of past. What happened that keeps you from receiving this? Um, it goes back to several things coming from uh, different things in my ho home. I have parents who love me, sure, but like everybody else in life, and it's all as all of us as parents, we do things that unintentionally affect us that you hold down to in your brain. So that's a lot of words years. to yeah. make a lot of excuses, but you know, <laughs> what your what your parents did good is good, okay. But I noticed, which is great, and and, and you wouldn't believe the number. You know, it's like. I believe your parents love you, no doubt. Hey, I know you love him. If it's if, if you're looking, right? What but you do? Because I could tell the man has has been loved. That doesn't mean he doesn't have toxic shame, you know. So your your face looked a certain way. When I said, "What happened?" And what did you feel when I looked at you and said, "What happened?" Um, what did you just now? Yeah. Um, I gave you a compliment, and you said, "I can't take compliments." I said, well, yeah. what, "What happened?" Uh, the feeling I had was sad, was sadness. So you're sad about something? It's just going back to yeah, because because uh, I should be able to take a compliment, and so it comes back to that shame. So you shame yourself sad. again. Like, yeah. So what's wrong with you? You can't take a compliment. Yeah. What's wrong with you is that you missed being able to receive them. That you couldn't trust them sometimes, or they came with uh, extra additions. You you need to okay. That was great. Now raise the level or stuff like that. And I'm sorry, because I get that. You know, you, it is so scary for me to say, I need you, I want you, I, could please subscribe to my website. Because, like, who do you think you are? I mean, I'm hearing all those words, like. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but you know what? I just want you to know that God has gifted me. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> You're. <laughs> Thank you. Who said that? Can you come on up here. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you come up here. <laughs> uh, and God has gifted you. I mean, seriously. You see, anytime a foreigner comes into a foreign land and they look about because they've been invited and they've got responsibilities, responsibilities to bring their gifts, you know, because we're not made to live alone, we're not made to be alone, you... you blessed me by just 
welcoming me. And then I was thinking last night, I've got to find some way to show the people that what we're talking about, it can be witnessed. And I want you to know that, that I'm blessing you. Thank God for you blessing me. And I'm returning the blessing, not as a quid pro quo, but because I want to and I care about you and I like you immediately. Thank you. Okay. But now, kind. here's the blessing. The blessing is that he experienced what I'm talking about. He's not believing what I'm saying. He just witnessed what I'm talking about. And when that video was going on, you were witnessing. And he will not forget this day, but a lot of other things he will forget. But he, he will remember he was on this stage, and he went, I come from some places that are sad. And I go, me too. Now, what do you and I have together? I mean, a lot of things, it seems like. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, the combination of sinus, the same, the same struggle, mm -hmm. the same. Same, yeah, same humanness. Sameness, yeah. Yeah, because there aren't any differences between us if we admit that we're human, though we have separate, unique personhoods and personalities, but we're all made the same. And those who admit it can be connected and still separate. They're not enmeshed. They're still able to go do what they're made to do. But if we're not connected, we will not be strong, you know? And the blessing is you get to witness this. You just witnessed what I'm talking about. You went to a place, oh crap, there's that sadness, there's that toxic shame stuff. I just truly affirm you and I meant it genuinely. And you're like, dude, go away from me. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, go away. And so you were so kind to, to come up here because you got so much, you're doing as much as I'm doing back there. I have a wonderful team that is doing all the hard work. I just yes, want to say absolutely. that. And I, feel, I, I watched you because I knew, I knew that you were great at delegating and I knew you were strong in leadership. What? Sorry, sorry. So you, I thought he was going to have a seizure. I'm like, I, I, I need to ask him first, do you have panic attacks or seizures? Don't come up here if you do. Don't do this at home. But I, I, all I did was affirm him and I genuinely meant it so he doesn't trust love. I'm sorry. I struggle trusting it too. Listen, because you know what? What's scarier than being reprimanded for things we already know we did wrong is to be loved for something we didn't even know we were doing. And I think for me, when you say that, what I hear, the thing is, is like we're not, I can, to say, okay, you're, you're a good leader. I don't, I don't feel like a good leader. I don't feel like either. It's always things I look at and see and go, I can do better. I can do that better. Sure. And there's a voice inside me that says, we didn't do this. You didn't get to that. You didn't do that. And like to see all those people, and like I look at all those people back there and go, I am responsible for them, towards for them, them for them, towards Ooh, them, towards them. Ooh. So <laughs> I want to make sure that I set them up for as much success and to make sure that they achieve the things they need to achieve as I can. Yes. So you're doing that because you're afraid. I do that because I love them, but I also there's there is an you, element of you fear. You do that because you're angry. <laughs> now I love them. I'm angry. Yeah. I want good for them. I'm well, angry. Yeah, I'm going I mean, for yeah. good for them. And I fear what will happen if they don't get it because, like, I need to have reverence for what I do. So I'm motivated by fear to, develop, to, to extend myself to ask if you help getting help so I can walk off and take Chip to the coffee shop and everything <laughs> will be happening okay here. Because he took me over there. Then he and I had this incredible conversation about how, how things work. Like, I mean, it's like Master Sergeant letting me know how the generals operate. Like, got it, because I'm one of, mm-hmm. So, so oh, no, you're not in trouble. <laughs> You just gave me some perspective. It was beautiful. It was all uplifting and encouraging about how much you love what you do and how much you love the church that is Grace Fellowship Church. So, so as we stop and we are closing, we're done. I want you to know this is responsibility towards a little bit versus responsibility for. And families cannot stay together if they take responsibility for each other versus responsibility towards each other. Now, if it's children, they can't be responsible for themselves. If it's old people or somebody's got a broken femur, you don't say, but you're responsible for yourself. No, I'm talking about if you've got voice, heart, ability, you're able to respond uh, in, a, in a healthy way. So feelings are, allow us to be responsible towards each other. Caretaking each other's feelings is a way of controlling each other, okay? So I don't want control of you. I want you to have freedom to be you because what you brought is, is good stuff. And what I'm bringing, it's good stuff. Now, when he 
leaves and we're stopping together, um, I highly recommend a full celebration of Jeremy and me. <laughs> hey, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. <laughs>